The Western Ghats is a majestic mountain range which runs along the west coast of the Indian Peninsula. The Western Ghats system is also popularly known as the mountain range of Sahyadri. It stretches from Maharashtra to Kerala near the western shoreline of India. When monsoon arrives at Indian Peninsula, it dumps more rain in the mountains of the south first before moving forward. By the time it reaches the northern western Ghats, it has lesser moisture left. This climate and the physical features have created a unique ecosystem in the northern western Ghats. In the past, the entire mountain region of northern western Ghats supported unique and endemic biodiversity. Unfortunately, today, it is reduced to only the protected areas like Koina, Sandoli, Radhanagari and Bhima Shankar. The forest of Bhima Shankar is an amazing mosaic of different vegetation patterns. A good forest means rich biodiversity of flora and fauna. Matured growth trees and lianas are the integral parts of a good forest. Sacred groves are the forest patches protected by the local people in the name of a local deity. Activities like grazing cattle or cutting trees are strictly prohibited here. Bhima Shankar Forest has many such sacred groves. Climax vegetation, where the old trees have reached full growth, is observed there. The old growth forests are home to the Indian giant squirrel, a handsome and elusive mammal that thrives in such forests. The dense canopy ensures that they rarely have to come down to the forest floor. Being a protected forest area, sanctuaries like Bhima Shankar retain a fairly good forest cover. Other areas like Panchet are not so fortunate in terms of receiving protection. They are victims of heavy human interference. The Panchet region lies west of Pune city in Maharashtra, a city with more than 7 million people. This area is the catchment of the reservoir that supports the water needs of the city and the surrounding settlements. Being part of the Northern Western Ghats, this area should also support tropical semi-evergreen forest and associated endemic biodiversity. However, the current status does not show such forests, but mostly open, barren mountains. The big question is, what caused this forest to disappear? Panchet Dam was constructed in the year 1955. A road was built to make this region accessible. 
contractors from the outside found an opportunity to enter this forested region. They bought wood and charcoal from locals who cut and sold the trees. The slopes of Panchet were once lush with the wild trees like Hirda, Bera and Mango. The population of Pune was a ready market for this charcoal. The heavy demand for the fuel was fulfilled by native trees from the forests of Panchet. Entire mountain slopes were denuded in the 1960s and the 1970s. This deforestation caused soil erosion, depositing soil at the bottom of the dam's backwater. These actions had accelerated physical changes in the region. The people who lived here for generations were helpless. They had no choice but to adapt to all these changes. Before the dam, the people in Panchet area made their living mainly on two sources. The first one was agriculture, especially by growing rice. Their other resources came from the jungle that was spread around their hamlets. Locals used this forest produce in their everyday lives. The locals were content with this interdependence on nature. Construction of the dam though changed all the equations. Valley floor with rich fertile soil and the lower slopes went under the backwater. So local people had to shift to the upper slopes and they cut the forest on the slopes to make a way for growing paddy or other hill millets like Natsni, Sisame or Varai. And during these three years, all the nutrients within that soil was consumed. And after the three years, they had to cut the next patch of the forest. And this kind of shifting cultivation is continued till today. And as a result, in the entire landscape, what you see are the scattered patches of either grasslands or shrubbery or scrub. And so the earlier semi-evergreen forest is now seen only within very few scattered patches in the entire landscape. Soil erosion is known to cause instability of the slopes. Heavy landslides around the settlements can be fatal. Uncontrolled grazing of cattle has continued on. Forest fires, common in dry forests of India, have left their scars in many places. Local communities often burn off their farm after the harvest. They believe that this improves soil. In reality though, it further harms the ecosystem. Important herbs, insects and edible species are lost in this process. At the same time, cattle too are deprived of good quality fodder. This also unfortunately shapes monoculture for only a few grass species. The saga of Panchet does not end here. The ring road was built around the dam's reservoir. This fragmented the forest patches as well as the sacred groves that were conserved for centuries. Today, urbanization is also taking a great toll on Panchet. Farmhouses and weekend homes are now being built where once trees stood. Roads constructed to reach these new settlements have now dissected the corridors of many wild animals. The trees continue to be cut. The slopes continue to be levelled. Birds like owls and jungle fowls are fast losing their habitats. Pythons and hyenas have almost perished from the region. Animals like wild boar and leopard that survived all this are now considered as pests to people. The local people are also migrating to cities due to their aspirations. The current status of the landscape of the northern western Ghats is the outcome of human interference. Ironically, 
economic development of cities has further accelerated degradation. It has left this once ecologically rich region in a state of ecological and also economical poverty. This has altered the character of the forest ecosystem. The sources of water are now depleting. The quality of soil is degrading. Panchet Dam promises water to the 7 million inhabitants of Pune city. But one question vexes the mind. Has long-term ecological security been compromised for short-run urban benefits? The answer may be debatable. However, the evidence is clear. The Ecological Society has solution to this problem. The Society surveyed Panchet catchment in 1985-86. The Panchet catchment was totally degraded and the condition of the people was impoverished. So, the Society decided to have a project of restoration of nature and the revival of the lost biodiversity. People in the Panchet catchment use the forest products and as well as they use grasses for their cattle. So the project we designed in such a manner that the people's need were taken into account and uh, can revive nature in the northern western ghat bima shankar is a protected area but it's not free from all problems created by human interventions In the past, the number of pilgrims visiting Bhima Shankar was much less. However, today, due to increased road accessibility and of course the growing population, the numbers have significantly increased. During 1998-99, Ecological Society had conducted a survey of birds of Bhima Shankar Sanctuary. Birds are the indicator species of the health of the forest. Based on this survey, Ecological Society had formulated management guidelines for the protection of forest. The electricity has reached the interiors and the nights are no more darker. The nocturnal birds like owls which need specific habitat conditions are, are forced to leave this area. It's simple. If they can't find their obvious habitats, they leave. Latest observations by Ecological Society shows displaced sensitive birds like eagle owl, woodpeckers and hornbills. It's now time we take measures so that the mistakes of the past don't repeat here.